Hey scientists, let's take a moment to talk about ecosystems. What are ecosystems? An ecosystem is made up of all of the living and non-living things in a specific area. So that would include things like birds, rodents, snails, plants, rock, and any nearby lakes or rivers. But it would also include the temperature and the precipitation in that area. The world is covered in different ecosystems, but they all fall into two main categories terrestrial or land ecosystems, and aquatic or water ecosystems. There are six main terrestrial ecosystems that can be divided up by their climates. The two main factors of a climate that we look at are temperature and precipitation. Let's start with our coldest ecosystem. The tundra is marked by year-round frozen soil or permafrost. The tundra is very cold, but also very dry. Few animals and plants are adapted to live in the tundra. Let's look at a food web. The tundra supports very few large plants, but often has mosses and lichens. The lichen and moss is eaten by caribou and arctic hares. And arctic wolves eat the caribou and hares, while the snowy owls eat only hares. Let's move somewhere slightly warmer. The taiga, or coniferous forest, is still pretty cold, but it's a lot closer to home and covers most of Canada. Here we have a good amount of precipitation and temperatures that, while still pretty cold, change seasonally. Let's look at an energy pyramid. Most of the producers here will be conifers, or evergreen trees, like pine trees. Their needles are adapted to the cold. Our primary consumers include deer, squirrels, birds, and insects. For our secondary consumers, we have foxes and raccoons. And our apex predator, or tertiary consumer, could be a large eagle, a grizzly bear, or a gray wolf. Our next ecosystem covers much of the U.S. The deciduous forest. Deciduous means that a tree loses its leaves seasonally. In a deciduous forest, the temperatures and precipitation change based on the season. The summers here are moderately warm, and the winters are moderately cold. Let's look at a food chain. There are a lot of different producers, but let's pick a deciduous tree like a maple tree. The porcupine eats twigs and barks from the tree, and the bobcat eats the porcupine. Our next ecosystem looks a lot different. The grassland has few trees and much hotter temperatures. Grasslands still have seasons that dictate the temperature and precipitation, but many grasslands only have two seasons, wet and dry. Most of the Midwest and West of the U.S. is covered in grasslands. Let's look at another energy pyramid. Our number one producer here is going to be grass. A lot of times we'll have several levels of consumers in our grassland, like insects eating grass, prairie dogs eating insects, and hawks eating prairie dogs. But sometimes we can also have a much smaller pyramid when we have large grazing animals like buffalo. Another ecosystem is the desert. These are areas that are very hot and very dry. A simple food web might include a cactus, a beetle, and a desert owl. Fewer plants and animals live here due to limited water. Our last terrestrial ecosystem is hot and wet with lots of precipitation every year. The rainforest is one of the most diverse ecosystems. If we look at a food web, it is going to be much more complex here due to the number of different organisms that live here. We have lots of plants, fruits, and nuts that are eaten by parrots, monkeys, and agouti, who are then eaten by panthers, large snakes, and eagles. When we look at our aquatic ecosystems, we see the most diversity in organisms. Aquatic ecosystems can be divided up into freshwater, like lakes, ponds, and rivers, salt water, like saltwater lakes and oceans, and brackish water, where fresh water and salt water meet and mix, like estuaries where a river meets the ocean. Each aquatic ecosystem is different based on the salinity and temperature of the water. Some oceans are warm and filled with reefs of coral near the shore, while others are cold and support different organisms like kelp forests and seals. Some lakes have their upper layers freeze each year, while others stay warm and suffer from large amounts of evaporation during the summer heat. It really just depends on the water temperature and salinity. Let's take a moment to look at some questions. 